Well, let's just start with this. I mean, one of the things that, that was said about the union, what you wanted to do was to face some of the issues that face black farmers and also just to address past inequalities and, and what that does for farmers right now. What is the union doing to address those inequalities? Well, obviously, the, the issues that are facing the union in South Africa are uh, of historical issues in nature. And I think we were not uh, entirely um, able to address these matters, primarily because in 1995, 1996, the agricultural sector was in fact, um, 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 you know, changed to a level where everybody would actually participate in open markets. Uh, in other words, I'm talking about deregulation. Uh, deregulation meaning that uh, government was actually assisting farmers in respect of their produce. Now, you see, you cannot expect an African farmer or black farmer to compete at that level without honestly and, and practically so gaining experience and expertise to ensure that he can also be on the same level as other farmers in South Africa. The second issue, obviously, uh, that we made the mistake of is to look for a land without really putting together the funding mechanism uh, to say that we have got this money and then once we have this finance or funding then we can actually begin to look at the question of land. In, in your opinion though, which comes first? You're talking about skills, you, you're talking about skills development and that's what you're, you're saying really when it comes to that, that level playing field of you know having the the skills that you would need to be able to to run a farm um, properly if that's what I'm understanding from what you're saying so which would come first the skills or the land or do you do them side by side you need to understand Hannah that uh, agriculture is a very unique uh, uh, profession if I may call it that way uh, for you to be able to become a farmer you have got to first and foremost have passion to farm and secondly you have to truly you know uh, you know be on the farm uh, to really gain that experience uh, you would be aware that um, uh, the kids that grew up on farms uh, with their fathers uh, next to them on, on buckies now today they are very good farmers of course uh, you also have to acquire you know um, 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 uh, education in order to to be very effective what has happened, though, to be able to, to bridge that gap? Because when you talk about farming, my grandfather was a farmer. And I remember, you know, we would go into the fields and we knew a little bit about farming. So, so I do have a lot of farming in, in, my, in my family as a business. But, but also, you know, how do you fill that gap? Because when you talk about it being a generational thing of this is what you grow up with and you, you learn about it, there are things that you learn growing up on a farm, being part of that and being part of that life that you're not going to learn going to university in the books, in the, in, you know, in the lectures. So how do you bridge that gap and bridge that gap in a way that you're taking a person who did not grow up in a farm and be able to give them the skills, be able to give them the knowledge that if they were to have the opportunity to be a farmer, they would be just as successful? Absolutely. <clears throat> I think what, 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 what one would have to do, and particularly my own union, is really to take uh, you know, potential farmers, especially those who, who have this passion that I've talked about, and, and really put them on, on, on the farm and really work with knowledgeable farmers on, on farms and, and, and indeed begin to interact and begin to understand exactly how do you go about farming. How far have you gotten in being able to do that? One of the things that, that have actually been bedeviling, if I may use this term, terminology, uh, black farmers in South Africa is exactly as I've told you that there were mistakes that were made. The deregulation of agriculture in their country has indeed contributed more than 85% or 90% if you like for black farmers to really develop into commercial farmers. Now, uh, do you then sit back and say we have made a mistake and then we are not going, go going forward? No, no, you don't do that. We have now obviously begun to look at the new technology that would actually assist black farmers into accessing markets, into accessing finance. One of the critical areas of concerns is that uh, the banks in South Africa cannot just give people, you know, finance uh, because of the risk, you know, uh, in the sector, so to speak. So we now uh, have spoken to people and we, have, we are on the verge of signing an agreement with this company that would actually, actually ensure that the loans that our farmers get from 
financial institutions are actually protected and they are actually put in trust. Secondly, the farmer would actually have you know, a computer or a technology very simple to use and the company will draw the business, business plan and make submissions to the bank and when the bank give you know, the farmer you know, uh, 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 the loan, then the, the, our farmer will be issued with a credit card and that credit card would only be used specifically for what he has applied for. How, how far have we gotten though in this country? Because I think, I think land across the world, not just on the African continent, I think we've seen it all over the world, land is a very emotive issue. How far have we gotten in being able to, to do some of the things that you're talking about? Because we're not just talking about the land, we're talking about the business behind the land to make that land produce not only the crop that it's supposed to, but also returns financially. That's, I think that is a very good question. <clears throat> I think one of the issues that uh, we have not done very well on is to look at the question of land with a political eye. But I think we need to look at the, at the land issue with an economic eye. Because I think God has actually given the people of the world the land to work on so that they can actually feed themselves. You know, a country that cannot feed itself uh, has a very serious problem. Having said so, uh, one would ha then have to appreciate the following uh, fundamental uh, uh, points. Uh, number one is, um, we believe very sincerely so, that the contestation in between black and white farmers, uh, particularly with regard to the land question, and indeed the constitutional uh, imperative, section 25, uh, in the South African contest, is really a problem. And you need also to be mindful of the fact that uh, many people have actually you know, laid their lives because of the land question. When we talk about South African situation, many farmers, black and white, um, more than 3,000 to 4,000, have actually paid with their lives on this matter of land. Now, the National African Farmers Union believes, uh, and, and this will be subject to a very serious debate when we have our own uh, policy conference uh, at the end of this year. But we believe that in order to, um, uh, to ensure that uh, people are not going to be killed, uh, especially farmers, mm. very good farmers that we have, mm. are not going to be killed, then indeed we have got to consider uh, opening a debate. I want, to talk, I want to talk a little bit about that debate yes. and, and whether it's happening in a constructive manner because I think for, for some of us that are not in the, in, in the space that you are in, are not in, in farming right now, we're not in that business, you know, some of us don't know some of the debates that are going on. How constructive are these debates in getting, in getting white farmers black? Because this is a discussion that must be had. We are not going to continue growing the agriculture sector in the country if we don't have this very sensitive debate at some point and on some level. How constructive is that debate going on right now and how much engagement is taking place? Well, I know that uh, the minister responsible for land is really doing his best to ensure that we arrive at the solutions. But we believe that the 99-year leasehold is the way to go. Secondly, we believe that no African country in Africa have got what we have here in South Africa on where we have, you know, a, a private, private ownership, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if we have 99-year lease, the, what we need to debate is the terms of the 99-year lease. Zone. We've talked a lot about the land and, uh, and, and that issue as well, but it, it, it goes more than that. You've got the supply chain and that also the business comes into that distribution. Uh, when it comes to being able to empower black farmers to be able to get into that, because that, there's also a relationship in terms of, of taking the product to market, what is happening in that space? Absolutely, we, we have not done very well with regard to that. And this actually brings us to the following question, uh, issues. Number one, I believe very sincerely, sincerely that we need to do things ourselves. We need to create our own companies. We need to ensure that our government and ourselves begin to work together towards ensuring that we can actually create our own space to participate in both South African markets and African markets. We cannot, I cannot accept that we can have more than 200 million people in Africa, you know, lying, you know, or, you know, uh, on, 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 you know, with empty stomachs, while we have got rich mineral resources in Africa, in Zimbabwe, you can name it, in South Africa, in Sierra Leone. The African continent is rich. 
Now, and we're I, depending on aid. Yes, we, 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 we need to forget about that. We need to forget about a white man's business. We need to do things ourselves. And obviously, where we are not uh, uh, fully professional, we need to bring knowledgeable people to assist us to build our own future in agriculture. We cannot afford to kill other people simply because we want certain things called land. We can't do that. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really fantastic having you on Thank the you. program. Thank you for coming.